In this video, I will introduce, explain and illustrate the product rule, which enables you to differentiate a product of expressions in terms of the derivatives of the factors. I will also apply the product rule to further explore the behavior of the Gaussian curve y equals e to the minus x squared using the second derivative and to give the proof by mathematical induction of the formula for differentiating a power of x with the exponent as a positive integer. Consider a function y of x which is a product of u and v where u and v are themselves functions of x. The product rule states that the derivative of y with respect to x is u times the derivative of v plus v times the derivative of u. Expressed in the Leibniz notation, this is how it looks. Equivalently, we can use the function notation with the dash to denote the derivative and we can write it the way you see it here. Let's consider an example. Let y be the product of a quadratic and a linear polynomial and we want to find the derivative y dash. Consider two solutions. The first solution is a direct one using without using sorry the product rule. We can simply expand out the bracket and gather together the terms to form a cubic polynomial and then we can differentiate it and we get 6x squared plus 2x minus 23. The second solution makes use of the product rule. We write y as the product uv where u equals the first factor and v equals the second factor. Now the derivative of u will be 2x plus 3 and the derivative of v will be 2. Now using the product rule we can simply substitute now these values. And we substitute this is what we get. And we can simply expand and simplify and we get the exact thing as before. What we note here is the solutions are the same but the pathways were quite different. Whichever pathway you take will depend on the problem at hand. Here is another example. Again y is a product of two expressions involving x and we want to find the derivative y dash. We can solve this directly by expanding the brackets and simplifying um, the expressions using you know, the laws of exponents. And when we finish we can differentiate each piece. And this is what we will have at the end after we have tidied up things and so.
An alternative solution is to apply the product rule, recognizing that Y is the product UV, where again U is the force factor, 1 plus E to the minus X, and V is a second factor, 2 minus E to the 3X. So that U dash becomes negative e to the negative x and v dash becomes negative 3e to the 3x and then we can substitute all of this in the product rule and simplify as much as we can and notice what we'll have the result will agree exactly with what we had before. Using the product rule is often the only natural way to proceed and of course one tries to avoid going back to the original limit, limit definition here's an example where it will prove very useful not to go back to the limit definition but uh, make use of the product rule We want to find the derivative of x sine x. The derivative, of course, of sine x we know is cos x. And the derivative of x we know is 1. So we get x cos x plus sin x times 1. Which is simply x cos x plus sin x. Notice how just in a few short steps we are able to painlessly differentiate a, a sophisticated function you're unlikely to guess this answer and extremely unlikely to navigate through the limit definition of the derivative which would quickly become a big problem in an example like this you can appreciate the power of results like the product rule that provides such a elegant solution to the problem of finding the derivatives of product. We have only stated the product rule and used it and you might be curious to know why it works. Here is a sketch of a proof why it works and what follows now is quite advanced tricky and somewhat intricate so you shouldn't worry if you find it difficult to follow all the details let y be a product of u and v where y u and v are functions of x a small change in x called delta x propagates a small change in y called delta y. Well, delta y is the difference between y evaluated at x and y evaluated at x plus delta x. That is, delta y equals y of x plus delta plus delta x minus y of x. But y is u times v. So this becomes 
u of x plus delta x times v of x plus delta x minus u of x times v of x. Now comes the magic sleight of hand. We insert minus u of x plus delta x times v of x plus u of x plus delta x times v of x which is altogether zero so it doesn't change the overall value of the expression now why would we do such a thing making it look so much more complicated well it's common in proofs so as to introduce terms to make things look more complex or elaborate but to facilitate something that gets you past an obstruction or leads to something ultimately more simple than what you started with. The trick here, using an expansion of zero, expressed as an addition and subtraction of the same thing, has lots of applications in algebra. You might remember we employed a similar trick to complete the square when manipulating quadratics earlier. Observe that in the first two terms of this expression, there is a common factor of u of x plus delta x, which we can bring outside of v of x plus delta x minus v of x. In the second half, there is a common factor of v of x, which we can bring outside on the right of u of x plus delta x minus u of x which is significant progress because v of x plus delta x minus v of x is just delta v the change in v and u of x plus delta x minus u of x is just delta u the change in u now you start to see how everything is starting to simplify. We have delta y equals this combination and we can divide everything through by delta x, setting up something that looks close to the derivative dy dx. The left hand side delta y over delta x approaches the derivative dy dx as delta x approaches zero. We can see what happens to each piece on the right hand side. We have u of x plus delta x approaches u of x as delta x approaches zero. In fact, using a property called continuity and throughout this discussions, discussion, all functions turn out to be continuous as a consequence of assuming that the derivatives exist, which is a subtle point explained in more advanced courses in calculus. Now delta v over delta x approaches dv dx. Delta u over delta x approaches du dx. And v of x just remains as v of x. We can rewrite the right, right hand side as u of x du dx plus v of x du dx. Sorry, that should be u of x dv dx plus du dx vx. Or in function notation, y dash equals u times v dash plus v times u dash. And we have finished the product, the proof there of the product rule.
So far, I've introduced and illustrated the product rule, which enables you to differentiate a product of expressions in terms of the derivative of the factors. We then sketch a proof which involve <coughs> we then sketch a proof which involves some subtle algebraic manipulation and the limit definition of the derivative using Leibniz notation. Now let us apply the product rule to further explore the behavior of the Gaussian curve y equals e to the minus x squared using the second derivative. In an earlier video we use methods of curve sketching to go a long way towards describing the graph of the function y equals e to the minus x squared. We observed that the y-intercept is 1 that there are no x-intercepts and the x-axis is a horizontal asymptote. We used the chain rule to find the derivative y dash and built its associated sign diagram. We put all of this together noting the y-intercept, the asymptotic behavior of the x-axis both to the far left and far right and in fact that there is a turning point when x equals 0. Because the curve is increasing to the left and decreasing to the right it's natural to fill in the rest of the curve to obtain this bell shape and there appears to be two natural inflections where the curve changes concavity. To be sure about the way the concavity changes, we need to go further and investigate the second derivative, y double dash. Because the force derivative is quite complicated, we'll use the product rule to work out its derivative. We have y dash is minus 2x times e to the minus x squared, which we can write as u times v, where u is minus 2x and v is e to the minus x squared. Then u dash is minus 2 and v is our original y. So v dash is in fact the same as y dash. By the product rule y double dash which is the derivative of y dash is u times v dash plus v times u dash which is this expression and which becomes after a couple of steps 2 times 2x squared minus 1 times e to the minus x squared. Notice that the factor e to the minus x squared is always positive. Hence, the second derivative is 0 precisely when 2x squared minus 1 equals 0. That is, when x equals plus or minus 1 over the square root of 2. And we can build the sign diagram, noting the important points 
for x where y double dash is zero and the pattern of plus minus plus producing a pattern of concave up concave down and then concave up as we pass from left to right this tells us that there are inflections when x equals plus or minus 1 over root 2. We can update our previous information in sketching the Gaussian curve, conforming what we expected the concavity might be, and to locate the points of inflection. This now completes a thorough investigation of the curve. Our second application of the product rule is to provide a proof of the formula for the derivative of x to the n. You will recall that we carefully prove from the li limit definition that the derivative of x squared is 2x and the deriv derivative of x cubed is 3x squared. This is a special case of a general pattern that the derivative of x to the n is n times x to the n minus 1. A result that we used on several occasions before without explaining why it's true. The aim of this next application is to carefully prove this formula for all positive integers n. That is, for n equals 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. The argument that I am about to give is called more formally a proof by mathematical induction, which is a very common and powerful proof technique in mathematics, which you can read about if you wish though I think you will be able to follow the main ideas. For many of you, this might be your force proof by mathematical induction and will serve you well as a prototype example of the technique in case you go on to do more higher mathematics. The claim that we are proving is in fact infinitely many statements as n passes through the set of positive integers. We have already carefully checked this in the case n equals 1, 2, and 3. The case n equals 1 matches up nicely to the fact that the derivative of x is 1. The case as n equals 2 and 3 match up with the facts also. The problem for us now is to somehow prove the cases n equals 4, 5, 6 and so on. We don't want to spend a lot of time and effort on each case and we certainly don't have an infinite amount of time to go through each and every positive integer separ separately. This is where you might start to see the power of thinking abstractly. What follows is like a thought experiment. Suppose that by whatever means we've been able to prove the formula for some particular positive integer n. And let's refer to this formula only for this particular n by star. In formal proofs, 
The statement star is referred to as the inductive hypothesis. Our aim is to prove statements star with n replaced by the positive integer n plus 1. This new statement would be that the derivative of x to the n plus 1 is n plus 1 times x to the n. We can refer to this as double star. If we can prove that star implies double star, then we get an instantaneous infinite chain reaction from the case n equals 1. And then star must hold for all positive integers. Why are we able to say that? Well, we verified star for n, for n equals 1 and also for n equals 2 and 3. But that's not in fact important. It's enough that we are, we have verified it for n equals 1. Star implying double star means the formula must be true for 1 plus 1 equals 2 and then feeding 2 back into n for 2 plus 1 equals 3 and then feeding 3 back into n for 3 plus 1 equals 4 and repeating for 4 plus 1 equals 5 for 5 plus 1 equals 6 and so on forever racing through all the positive integers instantaneously. So let's prove double star after supposing that star is true for some particular positive integer n. Notice that x to the n plus 1 is the product of x to the n and x. So we can apply the product rule to obtain the derivative x to the n times the derivative of the second factor plus x times the derivative of the first factor which becomes x to the n times 1 plus x times and at this point we invoke statement star n times x to the n minus 1. Then this tidies up in a few steps to become n plus 1 times x to the n. This establishes the statement double star. Hence, star implies double star. This impl implication is called the inductive step. In formal proofs, by mathematical induction. It shows by the chain reaction effect that star holds for all positive integers n. This completes this particular application of the product rule for all positive integers n and for all real numbers x. If we restrict attention to positive real numbers x only, then we can go much further and prove that to differentiate a general power, say x to the alpha, for any real number alpha, you again bring the exponent to the front and make a new exponent by subtracting 1. This very general fact follows from the chain rule and properties of logarithms and exponentials. To see why, express x to the alpha as e to the alpha times ln of x. And then the derivative of x to the alpha becomes 
the derivative of e to the u where u equals alpha times ln of x which becomes t du of e to the u times times du dx by the chain rule and each piece is then straightforward the derivative of e to the u with respect to u is just e to the u and the derivative of u with respect to x is just alpha over x because the derivative of ln of x is 1 over x thus the derivative becomes e to the u times alpha over x which can be rewritten as x to the alpha times alpha times x to minus 1 which simplifies to alpha times x to the alpha minus 1 and this completes the proof of our formula In this video, I introduced the product rule and showed why it works. I also applied the product rule first to complete our curve sketching analysis of the Gaussian curve from an earlier video. In particular, to understand the curve's behavior with respect to concavity and to locate the inflection point. Secondly, I use the product rule to prove that the derivative of x to the n is n times x to the n minus 1 for all real numbers x and all positive integers n. This proof, in fact, is an example of the technique of proof by mathematical induction. We then use the chain rule and properties of logarithms and exponentials to see how to generalize this formula for arbitrary real exponents. Thank you very much for watching and I look forward to seeing you again soon.